Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 20 of Learn Lightroom 6, Lightroom CC. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about HDR photography. Now, it is my belief that HDR was created to give the photographer the opportunity to create a print that contained more dynamic range than their camera was capable of producing. Later on, software engineers got involved and they started allowing a photographer to create a print that had all this crazy lighting and crazy colors and the so-called HDR look that a lot of people either love or hate. Uh, there seems to be not too many people in the middle. But again, I think the root of HDR was really just to give the photographer the opportunity of creating a print that just had more dynamic range than their camera could capture. The thing I love about Lightroom's HDR is it seems to be back to that old standard. It just allows us to capture a scene and capture that scene in such a way that we really could see into the shadows and we really could reproduce highlights better than we could if we took a single exposure. And I often use Lightroom for this purpose, Lightroom's HDR for this purpose. And I'm going to show you how I do it. And this is more or less my trade secret on how sometimes I shoot landscapes and um, cityscapes. Now, I'm not saying I invented it, but this is what I often do. Now, this is a good example. We have this cityscape, and you can see in this image here, the uh, sky is perfectly exposed, but the city itself is kind of dark. If we go on to the very next exposure, you can see this is 7337. If we go to the very next exposure, 7338, we could see that the city seems to be properly exposed, but the sky is blown out. Now, I took as you could tell, these images one right after the other. And the way I did it is I used a Fujifilm um, X-T1 and I focused first, I used back button focusing, and I focused right around here, about a third of the way up into the scene, I focused on something down in here. So I had the camera in focus now. Then I framed the scene the way I wanted. Um, well, I actually, before I actually did that, I m took a meter reading uh, by half depressing the shutter button. I, so I pointed my camera up towards the sky in this case, and I metered on the sky, and I left my finger half depressed on the shutter. So I locked in that exposure reading. You can set up the camera so you use a button on the back to hold in exposure too, but I find it easier to just half hold in the shutter button. Then I composed the scene, and then I pressed the button the rest of the way in to take the picture. Now, for the next exposure, which I took immediately, I didn't need to focus again because the camera was already focused down here, and I have it so that when I press the shutter button, it doesn't try to focus again. But what I did this time is I pointed the camera at one of these redstone buildings right here, and I have to press the shutter to get an exposure on the buildings, then I reframed the image as close as possible to that original shot. And you can see it's just slightly off, but I did a decent job in my opinion. And I pressed the shutter the rest of the way in, and I took this picture. Now this picture is exposed properly for the uh, buildings themselves. Now I'm in Lightroom with the two images, and I don't do anything at first. You can see there's no processing done at all to either shot. These are the raw images. What I do now is I send them to Lightroom's HDR first. So I highlight them both, I just right click on them, and I go to Photo Merge HDR. And again, because I'm not using a tripod, uh, they're going to be off a little bit. So, um, you know, I have auto align checked because, as I mentioned, you just, you could be as perfect as possible and you're not going to get them exactly right. So I uh, have auto align checked. 
Usually I don't put auto tone. I like to process them myself, but I'll put auto tone on for now. And deghost them out, it depends if it was windy, if there were trees in there. I usually have it on at least low. And if it was a lot of trees or grasses, high grasses in the shot that and the wind was blowing a little bit, I might change those and to medium or high. But right for this image, low is fine. And I'll leave it like that and I'll click merge. Now, again, the whole idea that I'm using HDR for is just to be able to create a print that has more dynamic range in it. Um, now, today's cameras are a wonder of technology. They really do great uh, as far as getting great dynamic range. But I probably could have took either one of these prints and opened up the shadows on this one and closed down the highlights on this one and came pretty close to this. But I just find that you get a richer, deeper image doing it this way. And that's the way I like to do it. Now I'll come in here, and as I mentioned, it's auto-toned already. Um, it, usually I don't do that, but in this case, to save time, I did. Um, usually what I like to do is I like my black adjustment just a little more towards the black. And my white adjustment sometimes just a tiny bit more towards uh, a little higher, I should say. Um, I like to tone curve a little bit of contrast. And, you know, that's a pretty good finished print um, right there. Um, what I, uh, with Fuji, I should mention, the, the lens corrections are already built into the RAW file. If you're not shooting with a mirrorless camera or a micro four thirds camera, chances are your lens corrections aren't going to be built into the raw file. So you want to take both of these original files and you want to apply uh, lens corrections, enable profile corrections on both those files. So I should add that. You could see for my Fuji file, it built in lens profile was already applied. So I didn't need to do that. So I should mention that. So this is how I get these cityscape and landscape images that have just like tremendous depth to them. You could really see into the shadows and you re really could see a lot of details into the highlights. And that's really it for this episode. But I am going to do a bonus part for those of you that use On1 Photo 10. I'm going to show you how I finish the image in On1 Photo 10. Um, but if you're not using On1 Photo 10, you don't have to watch anymore, but I do thank you very much for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. So, all right, I processed this uh, image to this point in Lightroom. And one thing I should mention, you don't see me do much with detail. I don't really uh, add sharpening or much to the image uh, because I use on one photo 10. Um, and you'll see what we'll do. So I'm going to go up here to edit in and I'm going to go to um, on one effects. And it's going to want to create a copy, and that's fine. And we're going to click Edit. And, you know, we get, all of us use these plugins, I guess, to satisfy our own personality. And I do specific things, it seems like, all the time. So I'm going to do a normal photo. Um, you know, with, with these uh, plugins, and usually what I do is I just add a filter, Dynamic Contrast adds a lot of like looks like clarity on steroids then i like to add sunshine plugin and this one i'll mess around with a little bit um, right here there's these little presets and i'll hover over the preset and find one i kind of like and just go through okay i like um, warm highlights but it does it is tending to kind of blow out the sky a little bit so what I'll do now is I'll add a tone enhancer and you can see how that brought that back even at the default settings and then I'll just come in and I'll add a vignette and I usually like this soft vignette like that and then I click apply and I'm done. So that's really how quick this could be. You really don't have to spend an entire evening in Lightroom processing your images. Um, you know, it does, you know, once you know what you want, you could get it 
to get to it relatively quickly. So again, here is the first original image that was uh, exposed for the sky. And you can see I didn't bracket these or anything like that. Um, if I go over uh, to the uh, library module and we look at the metadata, and we look right here, exposure bias is 0 EV. So that is properly exposed for the sky. And then I go to the one that's overexposed, and you can see exposure bias, bias is 0 EV. So I didn't bracket. I just exposed this one off the buildings right here. Then I did the HDR um, processing, and then I did the processing in on one photo 10 and there's my finished shot so you could see you really could add a lot of um, a lot of dynamics a lot of depth to your images if you just do this simple thing just take two different exposures uh, expose one on something that is the highlights if you're doing a landscape that's easy expose off the sky then expose another one for something more towards the shadows. In this case, it was one of the darker buildings that I exposed for. And you get a great, great image when you do that. So that's it. That's kind of my workflow and my little secret of how I get these really dynamic, um, deep landscapes and cityscapes. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.